this video, we're going to be fixing this overheating PS4. This got sent in by a customer via our Fast Tech mailing service. They ordered a shipping box and uh, we sent an empty box to them. They put their system in, sent it to us for service. You can do the same by clicking the link in the description box. This video is brought to you by Fast Tech Pro Auto Kit, which like the Fast Tech Pro Toolkit, has all the bits you need to disassemble your PS4 with the big difference being that it includes an automatic screwdriver, which is what we're gonna be using today. And uh, the benefit of using this kit over our Fast Tech Pro Toolkit is again, the automatic toolkit, it's gonna make things a lot easier for us. It includes three different bit groups and we're gonna be using one of those today to disassemble our PS4. All right, to get started on our disassembly, we're gonna look at the back of the PS4. To disassemble our PS4, there's some screws at the back we're gonna have to remove. This is a COH1001. There's four stickers at the back that are hiding four Torx T8H screws that we're gonna remove. So you can use a knife to remove the stickers. and then the fourth one once you have the screws exposed we're going to use our t8h bit that we use from our fast tech pro auto kit and i'm going to go ahead and remove these screws Once we've removed the torque screws, we're gonna grab the case from the back, from the sides, like that, lift it up, like that, and it's gonna come off. We're gonna remove the screws that hold the power supply in. Once we remove the screws, the, we're gonna remove the connector on the side. Now we can lift the power supply out. Next, we're gonna remove the cable for the antenna. You can just lift it up. Then we're gonna remove the disc drive ribbon cable by pushing down on this connector and pulling the cable out. And we're also gonna remove the power cable for the disc drive by wiggling and pulling. Make sure you pull from the white part, not the off-white part, not from the connector here, but from the connector here. You don't wanna rip out these connectors. Then we're gonna flip the console over. We're gonna remove the hard drive cover. We're gonna remove the Phillips screw that holds the hard drive in. And then the hard drives is gonna come out. Then we're gonna remove these Torx screws. On the case. And then this piece of the case is gonna be removed by lifting it from the front, like that. I'm gonna blow some of this dust away. We're gonna remove all these Torx screws that hold this plate onto the motherboard. fan connector by lifting it up this doesn't pull this way but it lifts up okay guys very important lift up like that next we're going to remove the phillips screws that hold the heat sink onto the motherboard we're going to remove the heat sink clamp at this point this plate is gonna come right off. Next, we're gonna remove the motherboard by lifting it up by the hard drive connector, and it's gonna come out. We're gonna get some of this dust off. Next up, this is a step that most people 
miss. And this is one of the reasons I think I got semi-popular on YouTube. It's because I was one of the first people to fix this issue, remove the heat sink and clean it out. Everybody else was just cleaning out the board, replacing the heat, replacing the thermal paste and expecting the problem to be fixed, which is not happening for people. But anyways, we're gonna remove these three Phillips screws that hold the heat sink onto the mid frame. We're gonna lift the heat sink out. And we can see that there's dust build up here. Uh, it's, I'd say 50% of it's blocked. As you can see, it's blocked all the way from here to here. That means no air passes through here. And that could cause overheating. So now it makes sense that this customer sent it in because they were probably having overheating issues. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna blow out this dust with our compressed air can. Again, links in the description box for this. I would recommend you guys do this part outside. I wanted to kind of demonstrate it. That's why I'm doing it indoors. I'm also gonna be cleaning it a lot more thoroughly. All right, now that the heat sink's clean, that actually, believe it or not, will fix the problem in itself. But we're not just gonna stop there. We're gonna take the fan out and we're gonna remove these two screws that hold the fan in. Now that we've removed the fan, out, we can clean out the rest of the case and not not just blow the dust out but i'm gonna be giving it a deep clean i'm gonna clean this whole thing out that obviously i can't uh do on camera but because i can't move this whole equipment uh again but anyways i'm gonna give this a deep clean i'm gonna clean the fan out clean the case and then put everything back together okay that's a lot better some of the cleaning agents still there. So we're gonna wait for it to dry. It's very important that you wait if you're gonna clean everything, especially with a cleaning agent like Lysol or something. You wanna make sure it's all dry before you put it all together. So we're gonna wait for this to dry while we clean other components in the system. But that's already looking a lot better. All right, now that we got the bed frame clean and dry, we're gonna start reassembling everything. We're gonna install the fan first. Gonna reinstall the screws that hold it in. There's two of them. One here and one here. We're gonna reinstall our cleaned out heatsink in here. We're gonna reinstall the screws that hold it in. All right, before we reassemble everything, we're gonna replace the thermal paste. This is thermal paste that's about eight years old at this point, because we're doing this in 2021. This is a 2013 system. So we're gonna go ahead and replace this paste. It's extremely dry and I don't think it's gonna be good. Even though the customer did not choose this option, did not pay for it, I'm gonna do it as a courtesy, also as a demonstration for you guys. The hero we need, but we don't deserve. That's me, guys. We're gonna get the old thermal paste off. I use a little bit of Arcti Clean, but you can use rubbing alcohol if you don't want to spend money on Arcti Clean. We do sell Arcti Clean on our website. Links in the description box, as usual. But if you don't want to spend that extra dough, you can use rubbing alcohol, and it's just as good. So we're gonna be using Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. We sell this on our website. Links in the description box. You can use the coupon code YouTube for a discount. We're gonna be applying the thermal paste on the main board. Again, just get a little bit of rubbing alcohol or Arcti Clean on your dye and then just wipe it off. Once we've removed the old thermal paste, you're gonna get a mirror finish like that. We're gonna get our thermal paste. We're gonna apply a small amount, not too much. And then we're gonna use the applicator that's included to spread it around. And 
Now that we have a fresh application of thermal paste, we're gonna reinstall it back into the system. You wanna make sure all these thermal pads are there as well, and they're all there. The ones off here are on the heat sink, so they're all present. You just wanna make sure you don't lose any of those. We're gonna install the motherboard. The ports go in first. These ports, they go in the back here. All right. Don't let that cable get in the way. You should have removed this if you're doing it the first time, but I know what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna route that through and then close. Then we're gonna put the back plate on, which I've also cleaned. Heat sink, brace goes back on. Fastec Pro Auto Kit driver can be tightened manually. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're not gonna use the auto feature. Cause you, cause you really wanna get a feel of how tight they are and you can't really do that with an automatic kit like this. Yeah, so you wanna make sure it's nice and tight in the end. Now we're gonna reattach the fan. We're gonna line it on top and then push down like that. You're gonna hear a click. And now it's in. Let's install the rest of the torque screws back into the system. We're gonna reattach this part of the case, which I've also cleaned out. The back goes on first, so we're gonna put the back on and then push it down from the front. And it's gonna click in. There's a screw here and here. We're gonna reinstall the hard drive by sliding it in. Install the hard drive cover, which I've cleaned. I'm gonna click it back on. Turn the console around. Reconnect the cable for the disk drive. Power. We're gonna reroute the antenna cable as it was. Reconnect the disk drive ribbon data cable by pushing down on the clip pushing the cable in and then releasing the clip. We're gonna reconnect the power supply by putting it in. We're gonna make sure that these pins don't get bent. We're gonna line it up, push it down, and then reconnect the connector on the side. It only goes in one way, so make sure it goes in the right way. Reinstall the screws. Install the bottom of the case, which I've cleaned out. It's nice and shiny. The front goes on first like that. And then you're gonna connect it from the back. You're gonna hear the, the clicks clip in. And now we're gonna reinstall the torque screws on the case. At this point, you can reattach the stickers that cover the torque screws. The ones in the middle are warranty stickers. Not that it matters anyways, because this thing hasn't had warranty in like five years. All right, that concludes our PS4 disassembly and cleaning video. This is how you properly clean out your first gen PS4. If you like this video, please smash that like button, smash that subscribe button and, and smash that bell next to the subscribe button. 
Also, check out my vlog channel where I travel the world and record my adventures. I promise you won't regret it. The link is in the description box for that. And once again, as always guys, thanks for watching. I support every single viewer on my channel. I can't, I can't believe sometimes that I'm almost at 6 million views. And if you need any of the tools that you saw in our video today, including all kinds of parts for PS4, Xbox, and anything you can think of electronic related, please visit us at fasttechstore.com or fasttech.ca and I'll catch you in the next one.